Sharks, as a whole, are incredibly diverse, with almost every aquatic body plan and niche out there being in some way, shape or form, being tried out at some point, either in the past or today. This remains true for Chondrichthians broadly, to which true sharks belong, as some of their relatives were in many ways even more peculiar. Case in point, the enigmatically fascinating Lystracanthus. The term of quote-unquote shark, in this case, is used rather loosely in this instance, since Lystracanthus was not a member of the true sharks, comprising Celestiomorpha, although they are still more broadly Chondrichthians. Lystracanthus is a peculiar genus, their name meaning border spine, as will be evident, with there being numerous species assigned to them, although like many cartilaginous fish known from the fossil record, their remains, as such, are notoriously fragile, with their regularly shedded teeth and disarticulated vertebrae usually being all that we know of from these fascinating animals. Described back in 1870 from Carboniferous strata in the United States, fossils of Lystocanthus are most well known by their standout feature, that's being their tremendous, feather-like denticles, which would have been their primary integument in life. These denticles are composed of a large main spine, from which secondary, smaller spines emanate from the sides, much like the barbs of a comb or feather, and could be up to 4 inches or 10 centimetres in length. Histology studies have revealed that the largest of these denticles were originally hollow, and were then secondarily ossified as a cellular bone. In sections conducted on them, many of the subsidiary spines contain a network of fine capillaries that extend from the deep interior of the denticle and just beneath the tip of the spine, which may represent an arrangement of dentine tubules, which may have provided them with an additional electrosensory or chemosensory function, although this does need to be examined more. Additional protection, sexual display, and potentially even having a role in dismembering prey, as has been discovered in the dogfish, Siliorhinus canicula, so there's definitely a range of speculative ideas for their function. Since their initial discovery, their spines have been found throughout the Northern Hemisphere, throughout the American Midwest, England, Belgium, Germany, the Czech Republic, as well as in China and the Ural region of Russia, with there even being a Southern Hemisphere example from Queensland, Australia. Lystocanthus fossils range from the early Carboniferous and even into the early Triassic, as indicated by remains found in the Sulphur Mountain Formation in Western Canada, with them being named Lystocanthus pectinatus. They represent the youngest record of the genus known so far, and also therefore managed to survive the catastrophic Permian end mass extinction, where more than 81% of all marine species were wiped out, a true testament to their survivability. Lystocanthus isn't alone in terms of their integument, however, as one species, that being Lystocanthus spinatus, has since been referred to a new genus, being coined as Acanthoracus from the British Isles, literally translating to spine spine, and the common name by the researchers as the spiny spined shark. Closely related to Lystocanthus, this genus differs in that the posterior spines on the elongated denticles were markedly different in structure. As such, the new family of Lystocanthidae was erected to accommodate the new taxa, although outside of this, their relationship of this clase within the subclass of Elasmobranchi remains unclear, and their affinities remain largely uncertain. There is currently, at least, no unequivocal reports of associated teeth described, which is the primary way of addressing said questions due to all of the information even the most minute structures of them can provide. Their appearance was known for a short time back when paleontologist Rainer Zangul once uncovered a large shale slab in Indiana containing a long eel-like fish, described as being akin to a frilled shark, which was indeed covered in long, spine-like denticles characteristic of the genus, only for it to dry out and crumble into dust due to its fragility. With no photographs, and only the description to go off of, Reconstructions have remained very speculative in terms of body shape, although with animals like Orthocanthus to refer off of, their eel-like body plan is able to be better conceptualised, essentially remaining as a paleontological cryptid ever since. What is noticeable, however, is that some incredibly well-preserved specimens have indeed been found by aspiring paleontology enthusiasts, and even an alleged head region including teeth, although a formal description of these remains is still ongoing although hopefully it happens eventually, so that their enigmatic existence can be better understood. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that's may be.